So yeah, those are my final thoughts. Muldoon should have been in one of the Jurassic Park games instead of Grant, freaking paleontologist digging up those fossils and crap. Oh, also, wait a second. Wasn't John Hammond eaten by compies in the book? Well, with that in mind, I guess it's based off the first game and the movie, I guess. It's definitely not based off the novel now, since John Hammond authorized these two to go to the island in the first place. Ah! Oh, on a side note, too, when you use the tranquilizer missile, do not shoot your feet with it. It will explode on you and take about a sixth or an eighth off your damage. It hurts you, and it also hurts your second player. So do not shoot your feet with a tranquilizer missile. Dear God! Okay, anyways, let's do the mission blockade. <laughs> Wait, what the hell's going on? I'm shooting them with tranquilizer and they're not dying. Oh my god, no. Yeah, that's right. You can't kill men with non-lethal weapons. It doesn't even stun them, doesn't even put them to sleep. It doesn't do anything to them. What the freaking hell? Tranquilizer doesn't work. Tranquilizer missiles don't work. Not even cattle prod works. It doesn't freaking work on them. Wait a minute. A flamethrower? A flamethrower troop? You've got to be kidding me! A flamethrower! I thought they were freaking trying to capture the dinosaurs, not freaking barbecue them! Let's screw Bios in! Let's just go barbecue the dinosaurs and have a barbecue now! A flamethrower troop. Let's have some barbecue roasted raptor wings, why don't we? Oh yeah! You know what I'm gonna do? I am going to wear my Muldoon hat that I used to wear when I was a kid. And now, I'm gonna kick ass. So, so far we have white guys, black guys, and we have flamethrower troops. Let's see what else we have. We have rocket launcher troops that shoot rockets at you, or they look kinda like the Trank missiles. And look at that, I'm shooting the same exact rockets at him, and they don't freaking hurt them, even though they're blowing up on him. But of course, when he hits me, I get nailed. And I lose a lot of damage. So yeah, to defeat guys, stick to lethal weapons, pretty much. Let's see if I can dodge all three of the rocket launcher guys up the ladder. I used to be able to do this on a Super Nintendo. Ah, eh, third time's a charm. Here we have a grenade thrower who looks kind of like an Eskimo Grim Reaper looking guy. He has no freaking face. And we got engineers who throw wrenches at you then just run away. Then you got this guy that looks like Robocop who follows you around and tries to shoot you also. I'm gonna fall to my death. Nope, just caught the ladder. And then finally you fight giant fans. When you shoot them, they blow up, just like real life. When you shoot a fan, it automatically blows up, magically somehow. At the end of this level, you fight this really buff guy with this gun flamethrower type thing. And me and Ryan just call him Biff though. We don't know his actual name. Now, onto the second emergency mission. You have to collect five incubators. This is kind of like Raptor Attack, where you're in the shed, except that you're fighting humans and dinosaurs, and there are no raptors. The only different enemy in this is a Gallimimus that's wearing like an Arabian hat or something. What the hell? It looks like a gypsy Gallimimus. You'll see later on what regular Gallimimuses look like in this game. What the hell is this? Game over, stock level critical? What? In tarnations? Well, I'll tell you what it means. If you kill dinosaurs with lethal weapons, you have this stock meter that goes down. If it goes down below 75, you lose the mission. It's to the right of your health meter. So that means you have to kill the dinosaurs with non-lethal weapons. Except for the T-Rex and the Raptors. You can kill them with lethal, supposedly. Which is kind of odd. But that's according to the booklet, once again. Yeah, in the booklet, John Hammond basically says, Oh, I want every one of the other dinosaurs alive because I am hoping to reopen the park, but you can kill all the raptors and the tyrannosaurus. And if they, anything tries to kill you, you can't kill them. No, all you gotta do is put them to sleep. You know what else is really annoying? If you notice earlier in the game, my stock level started at 100, but yet when you get down to 75, then you lose? Why do they choose 75? What the hell? Out of all the freaking numbers, why do they put 100 when you lose after you only lose 25? 
Instead of freaking 100 stock level, why didn't they just put 25 so that when you hit 25 with lethal weapons, then you'd be at zero? That makes more sense than losing a mission at 75. What the freaking hell? Son of a cockroach. Here we have more Gypsy Gallimimuses, and uh, here is the Incubator. This is what the Incubators look like. There are five of them in this level, and there are five doors that you have to go in where the Incubators are. Also, after a while, your stock level starts to go up again. So now I'm at 78, and it's probably been about two or three minutes. But just remember to keep killing them with non-lethal weapons, because if you're past 75, you automatically lose! Ah! Oh! So, to beat this mission, you collect all five incubators, and then you kill these two scientists with not a lot of hair. To celebrate, let's do the crazy finger dance. Okay, next mission, T-Rex Carnage! It's just another jungle level, pretty much. Raptors... Lothosaurus, Compies, yada yada yada. Let's just go right to the Tyrannosaurus. Now, who the hell is this guy now? It isn't Michael Wolfskin. Look at this. See, look, even on two player, Mike Wolfskin's there. Who the hell is this guy? Let's just call him Random McStevens, why don't we? Random McStevens, the truck driver. Oh, I know. It worked with the Raptors. Let's try the standing still trick. It worked in the movie, too, so the, the, maybe the T-Rex won't see me. Let's test it. Nope, that didn't work. Well, anyways, to engage the chase sequence, you jump on the truck, and the T-Rex will start chasing you, and there are also guys that are shooting you from vines. Which is really odd. You, can, you can't shoot the guys on the vines, and they're sitting there on the vines still. Why is the T-Rex chasing Grant? Why doesn't he freaking eat the guys on the vines? They're standing right there. Oh no, let's just keep chasing Grant and Random McStevens. That's complete bullshit. They're moving nowhere. It's like a free meal. Why is he chasing us? Well, when you fight the Tyrannosaurus, I suggest using uh, tranquilizer missiles and shotgun and machine guns so that he does not reach you, because if you don't, then he gets closer and he will start biting you. After about two or three minutes, I guess, then Random McStevens drives off a cliff for some unknown reason. I guess he can't stand life. Well, screw you. I'm jumping off and I'm hitting the vine. Oh, here's a little glitch, too. If you wait long enough, the Tyrannosaurus falls off the cliff. And so, yeah, that's T-Rex Carnage for you. Now, on to emergency mission number three. You need to turn on the auxiliary power switches. There are four switches at the end of the level that you have to turn on. This mission kind of looks like Blockade, and even has the same music as Blockade, and you fight, once again, you fight dinosaurs, and you fight people again. Hey, it's another blind dancing raptor! Oh, a raptor versus a human. Maybe the raptor will kill the human. What? What is this? The raptor doesn't even kill him. He's just standing there. It's like the dinosaurs have alliance with the humans. We should just call this game Everyone Hates Dr. Grant and he should never come into Jurassic Park games ever again. And Muldoon should take his place, damn it! And Dr. Grant is even wearing his hat. He wears his hat in all the other games. That's why probably everyone hates him. It's because he's not wearing his hat. The power is in the hat, damn it! You know, Muldoon is powerful because of his hat. Indiana Jones is powerful because of his hat. Chuck Norris is powerful because of his beard. But Grant sucks because he has nothing. Not even his hat! Ah! Ah! Pardon me? Okay, so now you get to the auxiliary power switch room, and there are the four buttons that you have to activate in a certain order. But to activate them, you have to shoot the buttons. You do not have to touch them, because it makes a lot more sense to shoot them. The buttons will definitely not break if you shoot them, of course not. It makes just as much sense as fans blowing up in Blockade. So, once you get the right order, then you beat the mission. Moving right along to the next mission, let's go to Protect the Gallimimus. This is mostly a human mission. You fight humans as the bad guys, and there are a few Gallimimus I will show you. There are also mines in this level as well. Shoot them. Ah, here's some Gallimimuses. See, that's what Gallimimuses look like. Be careful, there are some parts where you can fall through the floor and lose life, too. Anyways, at the end of the level, you fight this helicopter with a chain attached to it. Shoot the chain, and then once it loses it, you have to shoot the helicopter, then it's destroyed eventually. 